A wise business mentor once warned me that any leader of a big movement must be prepared for unjust criticism, false accusations, and fraud. Expect the best, prepare for the worst is important advice for self-defense and for whatever your God-given mission is in life. Now, recently, some people and organizations have launched several attacks on the USCCA, ranging from outright lying to deceptive half-truths to spin up a false narrative. Now, look, I love competition. I love the free market. The USCC intentionally makes our membership better every single year while our competitors continuously try to make a product that compares to ours. You know who wins in a situation like that? The marketplace, the end customer, every one of us wins. But outright lying and complete intellectual dishonesty, those are the practices of cowards who cannot sell their product on its own merit. They are a disservice to the marketplace. They're short-sighted and frankly, they're dangerous. So please allow me to address a few of the obvious lies coming your way. Now, these lies center on the self-defense liability insurance covering the USCCA and its members. So for the purpose of this video, we'll not focus on all of the other good stuff inside USCCA membership, like expert training, education, our magazine, the 24-7 critical response team, and so on. Okay, here we go. One crazy lie is the USCCA and the insurance carrier that issues a self-defense liability insurance policy will drop you if you're charged with a crime. This is absurd. This policy absolutely covers criminal charges. I mean, that's the whole point. You'll likely never even need this insurance unless you're being charged with a crime after defending yourself. There are thousands of members who have had their legal fees covered after they were charged with a crime. Thousands of members. I don't think there's another company out there who could boast that same level of success in helping responsible Americans protect themselves. Tens of millions of dollars of legal fees have been paid out on behalf of USCCA members. I mean, we've added this unique benefit in the first place because good guys wouldn't get through the legal system until after a long and very expensive legal battle. That's also why the self-defense liability insurance policy includes no limit on defense expenses. But is there ever a situation where the insurance company could decide to not cover a claim? Well, rather than focus on the truth that thousands of people have been charged with everything from brandishing to murder and have had coverage because of their status as USCCA members, oh no, instead our detractors like to focus on the few rare occasions where a claim was not covered. So I'd like to set the record straight on how that works. The insurance company could make the decision to not cover a claim if there is clear evidence that the member did not act in self-defense. By the way, those competitors all have a similar ability to decide if your self-defense argument is valid or not. The insurance company would not decide to deny coverage to someone on a whim. Think of it like this. If the facts of the case can at all be construed as potentially being a covered self-defense incident, the insurance company has to provide coverage or else they'd be in breach of contract. Heck, if that ever happens, they'd be inviting a lawsuit to remind them and us what we're here for. But we don't need a reminder that we exist to serve you, the responsibly armed American. And if anyone out there tries to imply that we resent having to pay out, believe me, they're dead wrong. The massive checks involved with helping innocent people defend themselves in court are some of the happiest moments of our professional lives. But here's the other side of the coin. The insurance company is required by law to not cover someone if it's 100% crystal clear that they did not act in self-defense in any way. Now, most of the time, this can only happen with that final unappealable criminal conviction. Until then, until that moment, they are fighting alongside you with the assumption that you're innocent until proven guilty. There was a time when it became very, very clear, and I mean perfectly clear, that a member had committed premeditated murder. In fact, after originally paying a $50,000 retainer to the attorneys of Kayla Giles, evidence including internet search history, witness testimony, attempts by Kayla to hide evidence, and surveillance footage was turned over that overwhelmingly demonstrated that this was an act of premeditated murder. Kayla lost in court after a jury quickly determined that she murdered her husband. And just so the timeline is clear, it is public record that Kayla Giles sued the insurance company during her criminal trial for terminating her coverage. That case was dismissed and it demonstrates an important point that you need to understand. An insurance policy is a legal contract. 
and the USCCA's insurer is legally bound in a unilateral, aleatory way to provide you with the coverage that we said we would. There has also been a lot said about an ongoing matter involving USCCA member Alan Coley. Now, we can't comment on an ongoing criminal matter, but Mr. Coley has not been, nor was he ever dropped by either the USCCA or the insurance company. And on appeal, he will be represented by an appellate attorney whose fees are being paid for by the insurance company as part of his USCCA member benefits. Now, here's one of the half-truths being spun up. The insurance company does, in fact, have the right to recovery and recruitment in the case of fraud. After all, this is in the policy in the event a member attempts to defraud the insurer. But I can tell you that to date, the USCCA's insurer has never recouped any payments made on behalf of a USCCA member. Not once. Not one time in over thousands of cases. I know it's hard to navigate the legal aftermath of a self-defense case. It's something you don't want to and shouldn't have to think about. And I sincerely hope you never go through anything like this. But if you have to, please don't do it alone. If you choose one of our competitors over us, so be it. But don't make that choice because they've lied to you and misrepresented the benefits of USCCA membership. I think I should point out a critical benefit available to USCCA members that none of the legal service contract providers can provide. We've all heard the horror stories. A good guy gets acquitted of all charges, but then gets sued by the attacker's family. USCCA members enjoy the additional security of $2 million of indemnity and unlimited defense expenses in the civil suit that often follows an acquittal. In fact, we recently had a member with a case exactly like this. The attacker's family ended up receiving almost $500,000, paid for by the insurance company. I can tell you USCCA membership is the best on the market. No one has invested more into creating the ultimate solution for responsibly armed Americans than we have. No one has helped more responsibly armed Americans keep their families safe than we have. No organization has helped more people who have actually used their gun in self-defense than we have. If you have any questions, please give us a call. Take care and stay safe.